My name is Donna Jones. I'm an adult learner from South San Francisco, California. And the reason why I get to lead this workshop is because I won the advanced level back in 2004. And so every year since then, they, uh, the State Library has graciously asked me to put on this workshop. And the purpose of the workshop is to help explain the writer to writer challenge, as well as give the people who are here uh, some edge on you know, getting uh, the winning entry. And so, and also what I'm telling you today as far as writing goes, you can apply to any other uh, writing situation that comes along. So it's just not geared for the writer to writer challenge. So when writing your letter to the writer to writer challenge, what you're going to do is read a book. And when you're reading this book, you want to see how the book influences you. And you'll have to excuse me because I'm going to read this part because it's very important. It's like the rules of the contest. And it, so it says, so when writing your letter, in your handouts, I've written a lot of this so you don't have to worry about taking notes. So when writing your letter for the writer to writer challenge, you have to tell the author how their book did or will, it doesn't necessarily mean they've done it right now, influence you to change on how to see yourself, your life, the world around you, and telling them also a little bit about yourself. You also should make a connection between you and one of the characters. It doesn't have to be the main character, any character in the book. Um, and you will have to, you know, kind of tell, you should, you don't have to, but you should tell a little bit about yourself. You don't want to write, you know, the next Gone with the Wind novel, but just a little bit so that the readers and the judges of this challenge will get familiar with who you are. And also keep in the back of the keep in the back of the mind, you want to influence the judges who's reading this to vote for you. And this is like when you write any other uh, letter or article or whatever, think about how you're going to influence the readers to look at your point of view or to get them to do something. I'm going to read a couple of samples of uh, some entries, and of course, being um, I guess you have to be kind of an egotist to, in a way to be up here to do this. I'm going to read you a paragraph or two from my letter. And I wrote it on the book, The Gift of Story. My mother likes to cover all my books for me. She still thinks I'm in high school. But anyway, I also got the tape so I could read along with the book. And that's a good way for anybody who has trouble reading and understanding is to follow along with the tape because that helps improve your stuff. And we'll talk about picking out books later. And anyway, the part of my entry says, I need to pass on my gifts so people will not forget us and what our past and traditions were like. Your story was about how the great wise men's traditions were all forgotten by the fourth generation after him until one person who could recall them saved the traditions from becoming extinct. That story caused the stab wound in my heart to grow bigger and deeper, which increased my determination to become like that one person and save our traditions. Now, you have to understand that I'm the last of my family. I have no siblings, brothers or sisters, nor do I have any children. So once I die, my family traditions are gone. And this book, The Gift of Story, uh, influenced me to write down my family stories based on recipes that they had supplied me throughout my life. So this way, I'm hoping someone will eventually save them and pass them on to other people. And from last year's finalist, I was really impressed by this one. And he was uh, one of the finalists, not the winner, but I still liked it. He wrote to Stanley Toki Williams. And he, and he read the book, Blue Revenge, Black Redemption, a memoir. And he wrote, well, just a few months ago, you were put to death at San Quentin State Prison for crimes you stated you never committed, all the way up to your last hour. And that's not the real issue anymore. To me, the real issue is this. You proved to me and many people around the world that it is never too late to, change in your, to make a change in your life. And believe me, that is very helpful for me because I'm in jail. 
And when I get out, I will do my part for the community, just as you did by writing children's books against violence. And so this is what uh, Mr. Williams' book influenced this fellow to eventually, you know, help the community. And he did get out just in time to receive his award last year at the ceremonies. So that was quite impressive. And his name, who wrote this letter, was Jesse Grant III. And so anyway, this is just to kind of give you an, a sample of what people have wrote in the past. And, you know, it's not to influence you about how to write, you know, because you are yourself and you need to write from your heart. If you take nothing else away from this uh, workshop, you, <coughs> excuse me, you got to remember to write from your heart. That is the most important thing. Because if you try to make up something and lie about it, you can do it for a brief period, but it's not as effective. Like this guy wrote. How many was affected by his letter, this Mr. Grants? See, because he wrote from his heart. Whoops. He wrote from his heart. He didn't write a big major lie, or at least I don't think he did. He influenced me to believe him. So. A good way to warm up is um, you take a blank piece of paper or a blank computer screen and you just start writing. You write, I don't know what to write, I hate this exercise, you, you can write anything as long as your fingers are moving or your hand is moving. And you want to do this for about one to three minutes because surprisingly enough this gets your brain warmed up and it gets it thinking in more in a creative cycle. So you should do this anytime you sit down to write. And now that we've got you all warmed up and stuff like that, we're going to go into the actual writing process. Now, to me, there's three parts of writing. And the first one is called pre-writing. And I apologize for my handwriting. I have never taken a handwriting class or a printing class. OK, to me. Pre-writing, oh, i got to backtrack one minute. Did you say you don't have to write this? That you it's all in your handout. Oh. Just sit and listen and relax, and then, but don't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to clarify, what I'm telling you can be found in this little book. And my, I had wrote this workshop before based on what my tutor said, and then at Christmas time last year, he gave me this book. And just about everything I tell you is in this book. And it's in little short lessons. You may want to, you can pass it around. And people may want to write it down or whatever. So I just want you to know, what I'm telling you is legitimate. I'm not blowing smoke or something. OK, so back to the thing. How many here? Could I just borrow it one second, please? It's called The Writer's Book of Wisdom, 100 Rules for Mastering Your Craft. And the lessons are no more, I think, than two pages long. Um, anyway, how many here have picked out your book or plan on entering the challenge? Two, good. Anybody else? So i got to influence you to do this, right? Yay! <laughs> OK, basically, in your, when you pick out a book for this challenge, you can pick out any type of book. Look what a little skinny, tiny book I picked. 35 pages. That was it. I thought I could handle that one, especially where it had the CD. So, you know, you don't have to pick out something like War and Peace or Gone with the Wind. You can pick out a skinny book. It can be a true book. It can be a, a fantasy book, fiction. It can be for children, young adults. It can be for adults. Whatever you want it on, whatever subject. I did have a question I'd like to ask Jackie. Can they uh, do poetry, books on poetry? I believe so. Okay, even poetry books, you can go for it. Because I had that question a couple of sessions ago, and I go, go for it. You know, that's my answer. Whatever you like, it flies with me. So anyway, you want to pick out your book in the pre-writing. The other thing I very strongly suggest is once you pick out your book, ask a third person, not your tutor, but it can be your director, it can be your best friend, it can be your family. Ask them to read the book, too. And that I'll explain why later on in life. But um, just ask them to, to read it. And so also, when you 
start to read. You want to keep a little notebook like this handy with you at all times. You can put it in your shirt pocket. You can put it in your purse. Um, because what you never know when you have thoughts pop into your mind. It can be while you're on a bus, waiting for a bus, while you're walking. I don't suggest you do this while you're driving. I would suggest you pull over and ride in it. But always keep a little notebook. Because I find so I get some of my weirdest ideas at nighttime. And so anyway, I always keep this and a pen or pencil and a flashlight. Don't be caught without a flashlight if you're in bed at night, because you won't be able to see. So keep one of these with you at all times, because you know you get brainstorms wherever. And the other thing I created for this time, for the lady who had been to my workshop before, this is something new. Can you all pull out this handout? OK, I developed this this time around because I got to thinking, I remember even though this book was only 35 pages, I think I read it like six times because I couldn't remember where I laughed in the book, where I said, aha, you know, or that. So when you have a reaction to what you're reading, what's the definition of reaction? Huh? Yeah, influence or, you know, you laugh, you, you know, you, you're, you're changed somehow. Yeah, you cry. Yeah, exactly. So you want to write down the page number so you can go back and check it out. You want to write the paragraph number because you don't want to read the page again. And you want to write down how you reacted, like your emotions. Um, what are emotions? What's the definition of emotion? Feelings, right. OK, what kind of feelings are it? Sad, happy. Come on, there's more than two. Angry. Angry, OK. How did you, OK, what kind of emotions or feelings did you have today? Now, trust me, I don't want to know why you had them. I mean, Lord knows I'm not a psychiatrist, and I don't, you know, not that I don't care about your story, but we don't have time for it. But what kind of feelings have you had today? Sad, okay. Any other feelings today? Admiration. Admiration? Oh, Lordy, how do you spell admiration, folks? A D M I R A T I O N. I got that much. <coughs> Any other kind of emotions? Good excitement. Any others? This is such a quiet group. Motion, mixed emotions. OK, so are you all getting the idea of the word emotions? Anybody have any questions about the word? OK, because if you can get your readers to react emotionally to, your, to what you're writing, that's great, because they'll remember that. Like she, look how a short time I read that letter. Um, about Mr. Williams, and she said she reacted to it by, you know, being sad. So this is what you want to get in all your writing, not just for the challenge, but in all your writing. You want to get your reader to react emotionally, okay? So the last column is, how am I being influenced by the book? And if you write these down on this sheet of paper, or any other sheet of paper with these headings, um, it'll help you write your story. And the notes you take in the little red book, or in any notebook, will help you write your letter. Because you don't have to go back and think about it. It's all down there on paper. And you know, when you're taking your notes, don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about grammar, because they're just notes. They're just notes for you, and, you know, and your tutor, if you wish. OK, so. Um, has anybody ever experienced an aha moment in their lives? Do you know what it is? Do you know what an aha moment is? Yeah, 
of the light. That's the best description I've heard of an aha moment. It's like you finally, whoops, Jackie, sorry. Um, it's like, oh, I just realized this. And that's like this, the book of the gift of story. The aha moment was, I can do something about my tradition, my family traditions dying. You know, just like, you know, Mr. Grant had about uh, Mr. Williams' book. He said, aha, I'm going to help the community. You know, so that's an aha moment. So you want to keep track of those, too, because those are always good to put in your letter to the author. Um, so basically, um, what the pre-writing is, it's a time of gathering and collecting your, you know, thoughts and your papers and stuff like that, anything you're going to use. Now, another thing during the pre-writing is to figure out what time of the day is good for you to read and write. Now, I'm more of a um, morning person. If you get me at night, I can't concentrate. But you should figure that out because you want to have the best concentration you can. And also, you need to figure out where is a good t place to read and write. Does anybody have a favorite place where they like to read and write? The library. Hmm? The library. Great, the library. I always get my mom in the neighborhood and anchor. <laughs> 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 yeah, see? So for you, nighttime is great and in bed is a good time. For me, I live close to the ocean, and I go to the ocean to read or write sometimes, not all the time, but I find it very quiet, very peaceful, because I'm locked in the car by myself, and I'm away from distractions. So anyway, this is pre-writing is the time when you want to gather your thoughts, your equipment, and stuff like that. Now, the next one is the actual writing. Okay, and this is the time when you're going to organize all the thoughts you've done in number one. You're going to organize it all. You're all going to put it in a letter. And on the website, can you tell me what the website is again? And I'll write it down. <laughs> what? Library. Because I don't have this in the handout, so you will want to write this down. Literacy dot org, O R G. And on that site, it'll have this handout to actually what forms you need, your entry form, what letters look like, and a few samples of letters. So you should look at this and download it, you know, or print it out. So this is a good thing. I'm not going to talk about this here because you can do this on your own. Okay? So, any questions so far? I feel like I'm rambling a mile a minute here. Um, another thing I like to tell people, how many here feel like their brains, like this lady that talked just to this at lunchtime, feels like their brain can work faster than their hand, you know, to write or type or stuff? Anybody? Sometimes? Yeah, chicken. This is a wonderful thing. And what you can do is talk into this. If your thoughts flow faster than you can write them, or if your letter's coming out faster than you can type them or whatever, put it in here. Put, you know, tape record it. And have your directors or tutors or whatever copy it onto paper for you. And that way you can do lessons after lessons on this. And these are your own words. You know, what your tutors and that write down, that's just mechanical. But your words, what you said in here is your words. You're being creative. You're the writer. You're the author. So, you know, feel free to tape record it. That's very important. How many here have trouble concentrating when they read? Anybody? Yeah, I do. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah. What my tutor who walked on water told me is, listen to classical music while you're reading or writing or anything. Because he said there's, you cannot do three things at one time. You can do two. But doing three is very, very difficult. 
So he said, pick classical music that doesn't have words. You know, you don't want to pick any other kind of music but classical because it kind of like keeps your brain going and somehow. And I tried it, and it works. I guarantee it. If you have trouble concentrating, get some kind of classical music. I just happened to get, it's called Mozart for the Mind. And I just happened to get that one. But get any other kind of classical music and put it on while you're reading and writing because it'll help your concentration. Because trust me, you can't daydream, listen to music, and read or write at the same time. It's, it's virtually impossible. So get yourself a tape recorder or borrow one from the, you know, your director at your literacy program and try it out. You know, I mean, it may work for some people, some people it may not. Just like what I'm telling you in this workshop may work for you and it may not. You know, I, I don't have a guarantee, but, you know, at least it's suggestions. The other important thing is to get your ideas down on paper as fast as you can. That is really important because how many here have gone into another room to get something and forgot what they went in the room to get? I can raise my feet on that one, too. OK, in writing, there's three parts to this. There's the opening paragraph, or just the plain the opening. You have to forgive my spelling. Sometimes it's atrocious. Um, how many here has fished? Anybody gone fishing? <laughs> um, what do you put on? Um, the line to catch the fish? Bait. Okay, but what do you put the bait and the lure, the lure on? Hook. Okay, this is what your opening sentence or paragraph should be. It should be the hook. And the worm, I'm sorry I don't have a brown pen, is the wor your words. It's the bait. It's what gets the people to read. And the people, your readers or the judges, and don't tell them this, but they're the fish that's going to go after the worm, that's going to go after the hook. Okay, and this is what you want to do. You want to hook your readers. You want to get them to want to read your story. Because if you don't, they're going to go, Oh, well, why should I bother? You know, I'll just read the first paragraph, and, you know, it's kind of boring, so how, how good can the rest of the letter be? So you want to hook them. And most good writers, I should say all good writers, um, use this in all their writings. Like, for an example, um, 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 um. I just found this the other day. And it's in the Reader's Digest, which is a magazine. And the last sentence of the first paragraph, and you tell me, you raise your hand if this hooks you. The read, a new Reader's Digest book tells just how to grab some great free goods or merchandise or products and services, plus a fistful of cash for real. Here's how. How many would continue reading this article? Come on, squeak up. Good. You know, because why did it hook you? Me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's the whole thing to it. I mean, this is just one of many examples. And because we're running out of time, I'm not going to give you any more. But most articles have a hook. And this is what you want to put in your paper. It's commercial. Yeah, it's commercial. You know, you're, you're publicizing what you're writing. OK, the other thing in writing i got to get rid of my fish. The other thing you want to do is stir up emotions. Why do you think? Huh? Exactly. You want them to react. You want them to cry with you when you write about crying or laugh about funny things that you write funny. You want to get them to react to your uh, to your writing because that way they will remember your story longer. You know, when it's a tough decision between your entry and somebody else's, they'll go, I remember hers or his because I reacted to it. So this is what you want to do. I'm sorry, I'm kind of rushing through this. 
Other ways to make people react is to have them relate to your story. Have them say, oh, I remember that happened to me. Or do a warning saying, you know, don't cross the street without looking both directions. And somebody will say, oh, I should do that, you know, because I don't want to get hit. So kind of like a warning telling them not to do something. The third part of writing is the ending. Do you think the ending is as important as the opening paragraph, the ending paragraph? Why? Why do you think? Very good. It's not boring. Why? <laughs> You're doing your final last hook here. Good. You remember it. Yay. Yes. Um, how many here have seen a movie with a good ending? Good ending. Bad ending? I've seen movies with good endings. Okay, well, what, anyone in particular? Well, let's see, what is the good ending that I've, uh, gee, I've seen some happily movies. Ever after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happily ever after, that's a good ending. How many here seen movies or read books or television shows with bad endings? Pardon me? I don't, I don't remember what movie, but I've seen some movies. How did it leave you feeling? Yeah, like it wasn't over. Would you give it an Emmy or an Oscar? Yes? No? Yeah, see, that's the whole thing. If you don't have a good ending, um, you know, the judges are going to walk away empty. They're going to like, what happened? And there's many ways to have a good ending. And, it, like, there could be a surprise ending. But you don't want it too big of a surprise because they'll go, where the world did that come from? But you know, a small surprise is good. Um, there's a gentle ending that causes the reader to think. It leaves them thinking, like, ooh, this sounds like a good idea. You know, how can I do this too? Because see, you're influencing. When you're writing this, this letter in the challenge, you're influencing the judges to vote for you. And just like whenever you're writing a letter to anybody else, not necessarily in this challenge, but to anybody else, you're influencing them to read it. You want them to remember your letter. So you want all your letters or papers or whatever to have a good ending. You might want to end it with humor, you know, something funny, or, somebody, or give somebody hope. You don't want to say, well, the earth is going to collapse tomorrow. That's the, you know, sincerely yours. You know, how, how does that leave somebody? You know, it's like, well, I might as well go out and spend all my money now. Uh, the other thing is, uh, don't leave your, letter, your letters hanging. You know, don't leave those like, you know, like you're going to write a sequel. You're going to re-enter the contest next year. You know, you want to have a complete, clear-cut ending. You know, don't leave a cliffhanger because you're not a soap opera. You're not writing for a soap opera. Um, your ending could be peppy. It can restate like uh, Esmeralda said, you know, with recapping what you wrote in your other story, you know, in the rest of your letter. Um, again, you can stir up emotions. You can, you know, get them stimulated, you know, because whenever you have your emotions, that tends to stay with you longer. So make sure you have, you know, somewhere emotions in your letter. The third and final step of writing, what do you think it is? Pardon me? The final step, the final step in writing. It's your editing. Yeah, that's a big thing, huh? It's a nasty thing. I hate that part of writing. How, <laughs> how many here like editing, like correcting their work? Thank you. She, she and I are very similar. I hate it with a passion. Exactly. Um, the best way to edit is Read your own letter out loud. Why do you think? Why? 
silence is golden here. It's not. It's because you can catch a lot of your own mistakes. You can hear your own words if you read it out loud. If you read it silently, you're going to correct it automatically and it won't be corrected on paper. It'll just be corrected in your brain and what good is that? You know, so read it out loud before you even give it to your tutors because you know what you can underst what you understand and what's clear. You know, then the next one is you give it to your tutor. And, you know, tutors, they can catch your mistakes, your, you know, where to put commas, because Lord knows I still don't know. Eleven years from now, I'm still trying to figure out commas. You know, where to put, you know, um, periods, where, you know, what words are spelled correct, what makes sense. And so then you and your tutor go over that. By the time I got to this stage and he had finished with me, I had rewrote my essay, my letter, six times. By that time, I hated the letter, I hated the contest, I hated the book, I hated everything. I never wanted to see 